we can easily use Aussie Explorer tracks uh, to show the elevation of the track that you're going to do. This is particularly handy when you're looking at tracks in the high country, for instance, and um, you need to know, you know, how where the steep bits are and and hopefully how steep they are. Now, Aussie Explorer will do that for you when you've got a track that you've already done. I mean, you've been on it, so it's not such a big deal. But if you'd like to sort of see how much of the elevation you've done, what you've been doing, it's easy to do it. So let's very briefly just go over a little bit of old ground. This is a uh, an Aussie Explorer 25k map of uh, Eastern Victoria. I'll load in a track. This is uh, Lake Eildon we're looking at here in the middle. I'll load up a track. So we go to File, Load from File, Load Track, and we'll load up the height point to track that we've done a number of times. Now, so this is this is an actual recording of the track I've done. This is not one that we've plotted. So it's got a lot of information in it with with regard to um, altitude and everything else. If we bring up the, the track uh, control box, which is up here under the uh, moving map part, you can see the little icon there. You can see that that track has got 1864 points and it covers a dist of distance of just under 40 kilometers. Now, um, you can actually uh, see all the points. Uh, well, I won't go into this again. We've done it before if you show the, uh, the, the track properties and things. But if you drop down this box up here, the little plus with more options, and you can click on track profile and Aussie will bring up a box to show you uh, what elevation you're at at any given point along that track and obviously start off here we started to climb going a bit up and down bit of a uh, lunch stop there by the look of it and probably afternoon tea where these little lines are and you end up at the same elevation from where you started which is 300 meters um, you can actually uh, change the the axis and you've got speed you know when you stopped and started and turned corners and slowed up and all that and you can change the the uh, the other axis to distance but normally el the altitude and uh, the distance probably would be two of the easy ones so there you go if you've got distance on the bottom altitude on the uh, on the sidebar anyway as I said we've covered that before I'm just going to clear that track for the moment now that's all very well for a track you've already been on but and you've you've been on it so you know what it's like but it is handy to show other people and keep a record but what if you wanted to plot a track which we did um, out in the same sort of area we hadn't been on it before now I plotted a track out out the back here so I'm going to load that up so I'm going to go to file load from file load the track again and this one was a planned trip out to the uh, slate mines that we were going to go from camp and you can see this one has 144 points and covers 45.6.76 kilometers so really good when you plot your track I know exactly how long or how far it is uh, and give me a rough idea of how long it's going to take but if I apply the same um, method to showing me how steep it is if I go up to the plus again and show track profile there's no data because there's no altitude data built into those points that I've actually added to the map. Now, that's that's okay, and you could go out and do the track, but it'd be nice to know where the steep bits were and how far up it went up and down. Um, and you can actually do that if we use Google Maps. So I'm going to clear this away again. Clear all the tracks. And we'll go to Google Maps, uh, Google Earth, pardon me. Now, Google Earth is something that you can actually load. It's free. Just load it uh, from the internet, and uh, it'll give you a lot, lot of uh, detail and uh, terrain detail as well. So I've got mine starting up in Australia. If you go up now, and we're going to load that same track, that one that I plotted on Aussie, it's uh, to the slate mines. We go up to Tools on the top left-hand side. Click on GPS. Left click. We're going to import a file, so you, you may need to untick any of these up here. These are from GPS units that you download the files. We're going to import the file. We're going to import a track, so have this one ticked. And make sure you tick this bottom one. You don't need to tick the KML tracks here. Tick the bottom one here and hit import. This brings up a, a box where you've stored your files and you'll have to navigate your way around your computer to see where you have stored your Aussie uh, track files and this particular one, I've already got it open here, uh, the Slate Mines at uh, Via Mitchells and that's the one we were looking at earlier. So we'll just double click on that, it imports it and a really cool feature of Google Earth is that it takes you straight down to the top of that track, 
hit OK and we'll get rid of that box. Now it's a matter of trying to work out the elevation of this track. Now you can hold the shift key down on Google Earth and you can roll your mouse wheel backwards and forwards and it actually tilts the map for you so you can actually if you keep going you get some idea of the slope and the terrain and that sort of thing but it's not really something that easily uh, worked out and it's got no figures on it. To act actually see the uh, the graph uh, of this terrain and keep in mind this is a plotted track this is not one that we've done okay so what you do is you go over to the left hand side where the track's been imported and this little arrow here that points to the right and you just click on that and it drops down the next option and the same under tracks and again the same and what you're looking for is path you left click on that to highlight it and then right click and left click on the option show elevation profile and now that brings up the elevation of that entire track. This is a really good feature for you to have a look and say, well, you know, is it too steep? Where are the bits that are too steep? You can see as I move the mouse along the bottom here, and it's giving you the uh, the elevation in that little box at the top here where it meets the uh, elevation line. And also on the main screen above it, it's showing exactly where on the track that particular point is. So where you see that dip, which is a height of 710 metres and it goes up here in a bit of a climb to 1004 you can see that section of the track where that is so you know exactly uh, what's what's coming if you load that track back into your uh, Aussie Explorer Android tablet but uh, to have a look at the whole track if you have a look here there's a bar above this graph and it's got range totals distance 45.8 kilometers which is right because we had that uh, on Aussie as well the elevation the gain stroke loss there's a gain of 2512 meters and a loss of two minus and you can see the minus sign there 2529 now that's simply because so you're going up in total that much and you're going down in total that much now if you were starting and finishing at the same point obviously these two would be the same but you can see that I've got the track starting and finishing at different locations what I really like about this, it's got the maximum slope on the track is 29.6 degrees. When you're working out on, you know, what, what's, a, what's a steep track, once you get to 30, it's getting willing, up or down. Um, and the next number is a minus 33.1. So that's showing you uh, the steepest part going down is a 33.1% gradient. Average slope, 10.2, probably doesn't mean a lot um, up average slope 10.2 up and average down is uh, nine and a half but that's probably not all that relevant uh, when you consider it's these numbers here maximum and minimum now that gives you that for the whole track if you actually wanted to have a look at just say one section say we have a look at this bit here in the middle if I have the uh, the line pretty much at the bottom of that slope now I hold the left mouse button down and drag it drag the mouse across to the right and have a look at that slope and let it go now you can see it's shaded that area. Now the, the range totals up the, on this uh, bar at the top now, distance 1.4 kilometres. So this is the 1.4 kilometres from the bottom there to the top. The elevation is 294 metres, so it's a 294 metre climb and the maximum slope on that is 26.7. Again, average slope doesn't really do a lot. Keep in mind the maximum slope, you know, you go up and down the whoopsies, um, it'll take those into account as well. So, um, you know, it's a guide. It's telling you roughly. Um, let's have another look over here. There's a bit of a, an up and down here. We hold the mouse down again on that section there. Now, again, you've got a distance up and down of 2.14 kilometres. Uh, you've got a, a gain of 237 metres and a minus of 211. So you're going up 237, you're going down to 11. So you're finishing... 20 meters higher at this point over on the right than you are down at the start of that maximum slope 29.6 and the maximum down 32.9 so it's a little bit steeper in parts going down um, again you, you've got your average so these are things that are really really handy you can do the whole track you just left click the mouse and and that disappears and it goes back to the total again to show you how accurate this is I'm going to bring in uh, another track that we did this was out of the back of Tolmy we did a trip up to uh, Lake William Hovel and then up to Tomahawk Hut so we'll just go through it very quickly again GPS 
bring in the tracks, import the file and the one that I want is a track plot that I made uh, not the one that we did and in this one here it's got 56 track points on it hit OK wait for it to load go over to the left drop down the arrows hit the path right click on that and left click and elevation so there it is again so this one was a proposed uh, track you can see there's a, a rather steepish bit in the middle here which I wasn't sure what that track was like but uh, I'll tell you about that in a minute um, it was saying maximum slope 32.7 and uh, maximum up 32.7 maximum down 24.3 distance of 97.3 kilometers now keep in mind that my points here are a fair way apart when you look at this uh, the map at the top there's a big gap between the point here and a point here and particularly on the way home so this distance isn't going to be very accurate let's get rid of it we'll go up to here right click and then left click and delete that contents and now we'll load the actual file that we did GPS import you can tell which one's the actual one because the size of the the files here so I've got the uh, PLT uh, proposed ones and then the actual one here which is 170 kilobytes as opposed to about four or five bring that in it's got three and a, three thousand four hundred and seventy four points to it so it's a lot more detailed and uh, which you can see on the map now we go over to the left again and drop these boxes down go to path right click show elevation now this time we've got a distance of 108 kilometers uh, which is right on accurate um, again as I said a lot more we've gone around corners and haven't cut them off like we did on the other one um, it's showing a maximum slope of only 25.2 which was somewhere along this bit here when you uh, drag that mouse across and you can see the line there it is there 25.2 where I've got it right at the minute um, so again it's all due to the sort of inaccuracy of what I was putting into the original data but it's it's got reasonably close and it does give you this now I'm going to give you a, a look at the uh, comparison of this graph at the bottom and the one that we just showed you previously so here's the the two graphs one on top of the other the top one is the trip that I proposed to do and uh, look at the elevation of that and in fact I didn't know this was available the day I proposed that so I wasn't aware of that steep bit or really where any of the steep bits were the second one in the bottom one there is the actual trip that we did recorded on the GPS tablet the Android tablet uh, on Aussie Explorer and then um, saved back onto the computer and uh, brought into uh, Google Earth so you can see those two graphs are very very similar so it's a really good guide of how far along the track uh, you, your steep bits are and, and how far they go how long they take and things like that so uh, there's there's a few other things I want to show you so let's move back to the map you can even get more data out of this and uh, if you the first thing you need to do is close this uh, graph box down the bottom so there's a little cross up on the top right hand corner of the graph and I'll just left click on that to get rid of it now move the mouse up to not the path point but just above that where it left click on that and highlights the uh, the track log file and then right click and then show elevation again and what you end up now it looks a little bit like someone spilt ice cream all over it or something but you've got two graphs now two lines um, over the top of each other the bottom one is actually your speed you'll see over on the right hand side here on the menu you've got kilometers per hour going up to what 93.5 from from zero and it showing you at any point along here when you're looking at the at the graph it's giving you the speed of the car at the same point of whatever point you were doing on that track now you can see the speed goes up and down quite a bit where you might stop on a corner or go around it what are we on there they look at the bottom here it's showing about you know one kilometer an hour or something like that or stopped even it's actually says stop there at 24 minutes uh, this is the track that we recorded actually so keep in mind this is for the recorded track um, when you're looking at the steep bit here and as I said I'd talk to you about that a bit later this not only was this steep it was rocky we had boulders and things we had to navigate and negotiate around and at one point we even stopped and got someone out of the car and sort of to guide me over a couple of the big ones and that was up near the top and if you have a look at the speed it drops off at the bottom here quite a lot as we get up near the top and it's now showing where I've got it now it's 3.92 kilometers an hour so we were really crawling when we got up near the top of this um, it would have been nice to know we we didn't know uh, how far this this 
long climb was going to go um, and had I been able to do all this before we went I would have been able to tell them that we're nearly at the top I had a convoy of about six or seven cars behind me uh, wondering what was going on now to get rid of that again uh, but as I say it gives you the um, the the speed of the vehicle and as we were approaching home and obviously in the flat parts well you know up there we're doing 80 kilometers an hour and things like that so that's just another uh, part that you can get out of the tracks that you've actually already done I'm going to close this to get back to the other one you have you've actually got to close this graph box then go back and click on path again left click on that and then right click and show the elevation and you're back to where you were now you can save these uh, Google Earth tracks. We've already got them saved in um, Aussie Explorer format, which is fine, uh, particularly this one that we did, and also ones that we've plotted on Aussie Explorer. And it's it's really handy to be able to save them in Google Earth and and send it off to someone. So it's quite easy to do. If you go up to the uh, the tracks and then you right click, you can save it in several ways. You can save it to My Places, which will put the whole thing up into the My Places box up here on the left hand side and Google Earth will will keep that in there for you you can save place as on that and if you left click on save place as it brings up the box in your computer and you save it as a KMZ file which can be imported later on again so save you having to do it in, bring it in again from from Aussie um, and the other one is that you can email it so if, if uh, you highlight that email and if I left click on that it'll bring up my email program with the file attached you can send it off to someone say hey how about we do this there's the track particularly as I said for the proposed ones not so much the ones you've done or you can send one you've done to somebody and they can have a look at it on Google Earth so it really gives you a, a good option to uh, to share it around so I hope that's been helpful for everybody. I don't really want to go into too much about uh, Google Earth. There's lots of videos you can watch on YouTube to see how that works. There's other things you can play around with and little boxes you can tick to show roads and, and untick them and everything like that. But that wasn't really the point of this. I wanted to keep it reasonably short and uh, just show you how to get your Aussie Explorer tracks uh, into Google Earth and make use of it. Thanks for watching.